Uh, well, President Trump finally debuting his tax plan yesterday. He's promising steep tax cuts for all Americans, but the plan still faces hurdles even within the president's own party. New York Congressman Peter King said, quote, any tax reform legislation must retain the state and local tax deductions. Hardworking New Yorkers must not be taxed twice. Here to weigh in, contributor to The Hill, Kristen Tate and Democratic strategist Michael Starr Hopkins. Guys, good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning, Cheryl. Kristen, you know what? If you're in New York, New Jersey, California, this plan does not work for you. He's not going to get support on either side, even though he was threatening that you know, New York congressman yesterday, Kristen. How are they going to handle this? I mean, look, getting rid of these per big perks for high tax states, it levels the playing field and makes our federal tax system much more fair. I mean, why should people in Kansas be subsidizing the high tax and spend policies of a place like New York City. It makes no sense. If the people of New York don't like it, they can vote to lower their own taxes. But overall, this is a great plan. It will stimulate the economy. It will make America competitive again. And it will allow Americans to file their taxes on a postcard. So I think you'll see a broad support for this among hardworking Americans around the country. But he's not Maybe not from people in high tax areas. But again, they need to lower their own taxes if they have a problem. With this. These are powerful voices in Congress and in the Senate, Kristen, and if he doesn't get these, the support from them, he's not getting support for these packages. I think it's going to be negotiated. Uh, you know what, Michael, look, if you look at this last Fox News poll, it's interesting what Americans are saying. They obviously want tax cuts for themselves, but then they turn around and they say that they don't really favor a, a tax cut for the wealthy. I mean, lowering tax on corporations, this is our, last, our latest Fox News poll, only 34 percent support that. But the truth is, Michael, that that's the job creation factor in all of this. Why is this message not getting out to Americans right now? You know, I don't think the president has been very good at messaging this. And I think that's actually interesting because when it comes to tax cuts, Republicans have been so much better than Democrats on how to message that. In this instance, I think that he ran as a populist, but now you're starting to see uh, tax cuts potentially for wealthy and getting rid of the estate tax and the alternative minimum tax. So I think this is going to be really hard for the president to message and continue convince people that this is going to be tax cuts for the middle class and for Main Street and not for Wall Street. Well, but Kristen, I mean, you know, we haven't had meaningful tax reform in this country since 1986. I mean, and this has to be bipartisan. Right. We all, I think we all agree on that. Absolutely. At least among the three of us. We'll see what <laughs> Congress does. But at the same time, if you look at some of the things that they want to do, this, this, that doubling that standard deduction for most American families, I mean, we're talking at least a $1,000 piece of savings. That's the message. Can they get that out at least to tell Americans this will help you yeah. at the end of the day? day. Absolutely. The way I see it, there are three major ways that this plan will help everyday Americans. The first is that it will just simplify the system, reducing seven brackets down to three. The second is it calls for a higher child tax credit. And again, it doubles the standard deduction, which allows you to keep more of your income tax free. And the third, which you guys just discussed, is lowering that corporate tax rate down to 20 percent. Liberals love to say that, you know, lowering corporate tax rates is a giveaway to rich corporations. And while corporate do legally pay these taxes, the costs are right. ultimately borne by a combination of shareholders, consumers through higher prices, and workers through lower wages. So Trump needs to get these messages out there. Also, Michael, if you look at, we know we know that they wanted to go down to three brackets, possibly a fourth. That's up for debate. But those brackets, we don't have the income levels. What income levels, Michael, would do you think Democrats be comfortable with? You know, I think that's this is going to be one of the big problems. The income levels in New York are going to be a lot different than the income income levels in, say, Tennessee or Alabama. And so I think it's going to be hard to create brackets by only using three brackets. Um, that'll make it uh, affordable. You know, the cost of New York, $150,000 in New York is not, isn't going to go nearly as far, whereas $150,000 in Alabama or Mississippi yeah. is going to go so much farther. But so it, it is going to be a Michael, really complicated system. Michael, that's because system. New York has imposed high taxes on themselves. Well, I mean, I mean, that's not necessarily true. But I, want, I do want to say one thing to what you said earlier. Uh, it's these liberal states like New York and California that fund a lot of the southern states. You know, without states like California or New York, states like Mississippi and Alabama would never be able to fund their own governments. So mm -hmm. I think we should all be careful about how we, you know, attack liberal states. Right. Michael, Kristen, great points from both of you this morning. So much to talk about. Thank you for being with us so early. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.